Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. Welcome to this tutorial on the basket hole analysis developed in collaboration with the wonderful folk at Barista Hustle. What we're looking at is a picture of a classic standard IMS filter basket. We have light underneath the basket and we're looking down at the top and all we see is the light coming through the holes. The width of the image is 56 millimeters, which is the size of this particular basket. And this calibrates all the calculations we'll do in a moment. So you can look at the holes and uh, they're fine, but you can't do much with that information. So let's unclick the picture. And now we see an analysis. We see a circle around the edge defining the basket itself. And as was standard in these classic baskets, there's a dead zone between the holes and the edge. We'll see this is different in more modern baskets. We see some colors and the greeny yellows are the standard central size and they happen to be around 338 microns. And then we see some larger holes. This one here is especially large, color coded. So the red or the more purple, the larger the hole. And we find for the analysis, we have 641 holes. The open area, which is the ratio of the holes to this hole area is 2.4%. The mean size is 338 microns, the maximum hole is 510, and we have a standard deviation, which is a measure of the variation of 51 microns. Perfectly respectable. We can also look at the data in another way. We scroll down and there's a graph. And this is saying against the hole diameter, what fraction of the holes are of a given diameter. So you can see that around 290 microns, there's 20%. Uh, around 340 microns, there's also about 19%. And then there's this tail along here, which is saying that there are some larger holes, which may or may not be desirable. Let's look at a different basket. Let's look at a Swartz. First, we'll just look at the picture. And there's some nice holes. And you can see that there are some blocked holes. This is a real use swax, and as everyone notices, you sometimes can get blockages. For good images, we should have gone to the trouble of unblocking these holes with a sharp needle or something like that, uh, but it doesn't matter for this tutorial. And in fact, these small number of holes don't make much difference to the analysis. But if you're a perfectionist, do clean out the holes before doing the analysis. So now when we click the analysis, we see the circle de describing the edge of the basket. And now we see the holes go all the way up to the edge. So there's a very small dead zone. So you get more even flow through the basket. You see there's a good hole size distribution. There's some larger ones in this portion of the image. That may be an artifact of the photography. Uh, it needs to be checked. But as you can see, it's an impressively nice design. There are 1,135 holes. Their size is similar to the ones we saw previously. And so with more holes and going out to the edge, it's about 4% open area rather than 2.4%. So there's a, there should be, other things being equal, a faster flow through this. And then we can look at the graph and you see it's a nice sharp distribution, no tails, no long uh, tail of larger holes. So this is a high quality device. We can also look at the location variance which is saying how close are each of the holes to each other. And as long as it's the same uniform color, then they're all fairly well distributed. So this, these holes might be a bit closer to each other than they ought to be. And these are a bit further away, but they're at the edge. So that's the swarks. And now let's look at something very different, on picture only. And uh, I don't know the dimensions of this one, so I'm assuming it's 56 millimeters. Uh, if, I, if the size is different, then the absolute numbers will change. But for this demo, let's just assume it's 56 millimeters. We see this is very different. It's going all the way out to the edge as with the swarks. Clearly the holes are bigger, 
We still have a few blocked holes. Again, these were working baskets, so there's no shame in that. So now let's do the analysis. And we see a beautiful distribution of sizes, some colors from the blocked holes, um, and maybe some larger parts down towards this bottom left. But again, we need to check whether that's from the photograph. And we see the holes are much bigger. It's a nice size distribution. And yes, the mean size is 466 microns. There are 2,000 holes. And the open area is 14%. So this is very fast flow through if all other things are equal. There's one last delight. If I put on the location variance, we see something very different. Now, although the location of each of these rings is very accurate with respect to each other, the gap between the rings is very different. This may be a feature, it may be a bug, I have no idea. Um, whether it's important or not, I also have no idea, but it's certainly very beautiful. So there we have it. My thanks to the good people at Brister Hustle for telling me about basket hole analysis. You'll find that I have taken the idea from Robert McGowan Hallow, um, who's warmly acknowledged here. Uh, he was the first person to do this sort of analysis. His software and analytical skills are far superior to mine, um, but at least you have this convenient app. There we go, basket hole analysis for all of us. Enjoy.